I hope you are. All right. Uh, my name is Mohsen Behzad Karimi, and I'm here today on behalf of independent Farsi. Uh, in the la during the last week, we heard a strong sentiment from European Parliament addressing the current issues in Iran. Uh, they limited the contact with Iranian counterparts, and uh, while well, the delegation to Iran ceased its activity and relation with the Iranian regime, uh, are we going to see a similar move by Commission and more precisely by the external action? having in mind uh, the current activities of Iranian regime in northern Iraq, bombardment, bombardment uh, taking place on Iranian opposition camps, and next to that, support for Russia, supplying war, uh, weaponry to Russia, and uh, all participating in energy crisis, uh, energy war. And the second question I have for Peter is about the JCPOA and future, close future of the JCPOA, how the current event uh, affects the JCPOA, uh, are we going to see any of the partners to, uh, initiate the trigger the sanction uh, snapbacks or is there any development on that? Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Salom. Um, well, on the first part of your question, um, when it comes to actions especially claimed by the Revolutionary Guards in uh, shelling and uh, firing at the targets in the Iraqi region of Kurdistan, we issued already a statement twice on this. We said these attacks are unacceptable, they have to stop, they consist uh, or they constitute a violation of Iraqi's sovereignty and territorial integrity, so we call on Revolutionary Guards and on Iran in general to stop these uh, cross-border attacks. When it comes to um, the issue of uh, supplies of Iranian weapons to Russia, either before the conflict or even more seriously after the conflict, uh, Russia started against Ukraine, the European Union was very clear in our messaging to Iran, both publicly and uh, through diplomatic channels, that, uh, and also through measures um, agreed by the European Union, that this is something unacceptable. Russia is uh, involved in illegal war against Ukraine. We are witnessing uh, especially in these days, the increased brutality and the, the aggressiveness and inhumanity of the attacks Putin is ordering against civilian targets in Ukraine, against civilians in Ukraine, knocking out electricity. Millions of people in Ukraine are without electricity. Half of Moldova population is without electricity as a consequence of these illegal, cruel, barbaric, illegal actions. So, of course, anyone who is supporting Russia in this behavior will be taken into account. And in connection to supplies, especially of uh, Iranian drones to Russia, the European Union has already adopted sanctions. And we have said very clearly that we are monitoring this issue. And if there is a need, the European Union and its member states will continue to act in this regard. Um, when it comes to the third part of your question uh, regarding the impact of all the developments on the JCPOA, and this is not only the military activities by the Revolutionary Guards against uh, targets in Iraq. This is not only about uh, military supplies for the Russian aggression, but this is also about the ongoing human rights violations in Iraq. And the response, the brutal response of the regime against the public dissent, against young people and women who are protesting to have their rights respected. So the European Union is of course watching this and this is also uh, contributing to the overall mood in, the, in our relations and to the actions of the European Union and its member states. On the JCPOA, of course, we are continuing the high representative and his team as a coordinator of the JCPOA continues very intense outreach to the partners in order to make sure that we go back to the full delivery of the JCPOA, that we have a deal, but it's very difficult. The high representative was talking about it also uh, last week on Monday after the FAC that uh, we are in a very difficult situation, but still we are investing a lot of efforts to move this issue forward and uh, we are uh, engaging with the partners to make sure that uh, that we go there, but also the latest steps uh, by Iran when it comes to enrichment, uranium enrichment, and the insufficient level of cooperation with the IAEA are not giving very optimistic feel to the overall atmosphere in these efforts. Thank you very much. Peter, are there any questions for Peter on follow other subjects? First of all, yes, I'll give you the floor for a follow-up. Yes, thank you. Uh, I mean, I want to ask more concretely. We see cease of any sort of contact with Iranian counterpart from the parliament. Concretely, are we going to see any cease of diplomatic relation with the Iranian counterparts from the commission and external action or not? You continue 
regardless of 47 kids being ki killed on the street in Iran, and regardless of all the viol violations, GCPOA or non GCPOA, Ukraine, and all others. Are we continuing to have a relation with Iranian regime at the level of commission and external action or not? Unless the member states decide otherwise, there will be continued engagement with Iran because this is the DNA of the European Union. We see engagement as the way to solve problems. I mean, look at Putin. He is committing the worst crimes against humanity. And yet we are still keeping the channels of communication with, uh, the Russia, with Russia open in order to make sure that we still can continue to deliver messages. Uh, raise our concerns and try to bring him to the change of the behavior. The same applies to, to the counterparts in Iran. We are not cutting the diplomatic ties, the diplomatic channels at this stage. We are still engaging. The high representative is the best example for that having uh, repeated phone calls with his uh, Iranian counterpart in order to deliver European concerns, in order to seek clarifications on the issues, in order to deliver the messages of the European Union about the unacceptability of the behavior of the uh, restrictive or security forces against the peaceful protesters, the young people of Iran who deserve to have a better future and who deserve to have their rights respected by the, by the authorities. So this is the reason why we are keeping the channels of communication open until the member states decide about a new EU position that would say that we are cutting the contacts. But even in the worst cases of international behavior, the EU is not cutting the channels of communication because we believe in engagement. And it's very important for us to send loud and clear our messages of disagreements with regimes such as that of Iran for the matches that we discuss. Right, are there any other questions for Peter at this stage? I see two more hands up and I assume they're for Peter. So let's take uh, Svetlana first. 